Getting a definitive answer to the questions surrounding dry eye and omega-3 supplementation isn't easy. Various studies have shown that it has little to no effect, while others claim there is a mild impact. However, a new study from CORE in Canada has been published showing a significant reduction in subjective dry eye symptoms in extremely symptomatic patients. To find out more, I spoke with the lead author, Alison Ng. In this particular study, we studied a formulation that contained 1,200 milligrams of EPA, 300 milligrams of DHA. Those two are the two omega-3 fatty acids, and then added to it an omega-6 fatty acid, which was 150 milligrams of GLA. The randomized control trial had 50 participants at the completion. Subjective and clinical symptoms were measured at the start, after one month, and after three months. 24 patients got the omega-3 and 6 treatment, and 26 got a placebo of coconut and olive oil. To ensure compliance, the subjects were asked to fill out a diary, as well as having their blood tested for omega-3 levels, which is not something that has been done in the majority of other studies looking into this subject. And this study had great compliance, which was shown by the omega-3 data from the blood and also the returned compliance diaries. To double mask the treatment and placebo, the packaging was nondescript and the supplement was given an artificial citrus flavoring to mask its taste. To gather the subjective effect of the treatment, they used the Ocular Surface Disease Index, or OSD. The score itself is on a 0 to 100 scale. Well, the more symptomatic you are, the higher your score is. So typically a score of about 13, you are classed as a mild symptomatic patient. A score of 23, you are classed as a moderate symptomatic patient. And then a score of 33 and above, you're at the severe end of that symptom scale. For the study, they wanted people with moderate and severe established ocular surface disease. So people with scores of 22 and above. They also narrowed it down to people who regularly use drops. The authors also included a suite of clinical measurements. We did non-invasive tear breakup time. We measured tear meniscus height, tear osmolarity. We did bulbar limbal redness, corneal and conjunctival staining, a shimmer test, and we also did mybography as well. So a whole suite of dry eye tests that you typically encounter um, in sort of these sorts of trials. Was your study supported by anyone? The study was sponsored by um, Nature's Way of Canada. And, and they were the um, company that supplied the omega-3, omega-6 fatty supplementation. And they also supplied the placebo supplementation as well. What were your results? So overall, um, we found that um, the there was no significant difference between the um, test, the treatment supplement, um, when compared against the um, placebo treatment in terms of the symptom scores. This is where things get interesting as the OSD tells a very different story. Patients in the placebo group showed an average reduction of 7.8 on the OSD, but patients in the treatment arm showed a reduction of 13.4. But for patients with extreme dry eye, which they classified as having an OSD score of above 52, patients in the treatment arm showed a reduction of 20.8 on their OSD score, whereas the same cohort in the placebo arm had a reduction of 8.4. This is a significant finding, as the minimally clinically important difference, which is essentially where you can tell a difference in your symptoms, is between 7 and 13 points on the OSD. That reduction in 20 points, or 20.8 points, is it far exceeds that minimal clinically important difference. That was a really exciting finding. So how can you get such a large subjective change without the clinical measurements showing any meaningful difference? We know that symptoms and signs don't always correlate particularly well. So it is a slightly controversial topic, but certainly those anti-inflammatory angle of targeting the disease process has some merit. If you look at some of the systematic reviews as well, you know, a, a lot of them suggest there is some merit in um, using an omega-3 supplementation. However, one of the Cochrane reviews doesn't necessarily suggest that the evidence is particularly strong. But if you look at some of the other treatments um, for, for, for dry eye disease, you know, if we look at kind of, you know, those who might um, have to take um, an oral antibiotic, for example, you know, that has its own set of risks in, in managing um, inflammation there. 
um, including you know, increased antimicrobial resistance. You know, that's that's another consideration, whereas the omega-3 and 6 supplementation um, is, is relatively safe. There's good evidence in terms of cardiac health, cognitive health. So it's been a very well-studied type of treatment for lots of other um, health conditions as well. What further research needs to be done? I think what, it, what we still want to look at is those patients with milder disease. How do they respond to essential fatty acid supplementation? Because we recommend pa to patients in the early stages of disease. But again, if we look at a lot of the other studies, including ours, a lot of patients um, are actually fairly symptomatic when they first come into um, and, and enroll in these sorts of studies.